I got a comment from someone with the great name Sister Fixit, and they asked if I could do a video talking about wheel centering or wheel dishing. And it's a great subject to talk about because anytime you put a wheel in a bike frame in the fork or the rear end of a bike, you want that wheel to go in straight and you want it to sit in the middle of the frame. If a wheel sits off to one side or the other, if you have rim brakes, the rim brake might drag. With disc brakes, it's not that big of an issue, but if the wheel is not built right and is crooked in the frame, the bike could actually pull to one side, especially if that wheel's in the fork. And there are other things that make a wheel sit off in the frame. Something could be wrong with the frame or the fork, but the first thing you check is the wheel. And you check the wheel with tools or in the truing stand to make sure it's centered. And then if the wheel is not centered, you fix it in the truing stand usually or in the bike frame if you don't have a truing stand. You fix it using the spokes and what you're going to do to fix a wheel that's not centering in the frame is you're going to pull the rim one way or the other to get it to be centered. Don't actually center wheels over the hub, you center the wheels over the axle. So we'll talk about these things and I'll show you in a truing stand and with the tools, what it, how you tell if the wheel is off-center and how you fix an off-center wheel so that when you put that wheel in the frame, it sits right smack in the center and you know that the bike, if it does have a problem, it's not the fault of the wheels. To check wheel centering on bikes, you can use your fingers, you know, like two thumbs or whatever two fingers match <laughs> and just slide them up between the frame and the wheel and you can get a feel for if the wheel's centered or not. Um, you can use them however you want, whatever works for you. See how here I can fit those fingers in right next to the tire and I can feel that that wheel is right smack in the middle. I can also feel it with my thumbs like that. And here's a rear wheel on a road bike. And you can also look and sight and get a pretty good idea if the wheel is centered or not based on like the bolt in the brake, which is right smack in the middle can sort of look at the center of the tire and try to line it up. But you can feel real quick if you put your fingers in there, even if they can barely fit, you can feel right away if the gap's bigger on one side than on the other side. It's harder to see down here, down at the chain stays, but it needs to be centered at the chain stays and it needs to be centered at the seat stays, both places. And now a, a through axle bike, a bike like a mountain bike with a through axle, it should just lock in dead center with a quick release wheel or a bolt-on wheel, they have some movement in there and sometimes they will be off-center. If you find it off-center, usually you loosen the quick release, push down on the saddle or the top of the handlebars, tighten the quick release and it'll go to center if you're lucky. But if it doesn't center up, that's where you want to check the wheel to see if it's off-center, if it was built wrong. But if you find out that the wheel that you have on your bike is not centered in the frame and you want to check it, or anytime you build a wheel or repair a wheel, you definitely want to check the wheel to make sure that the rim is centered correctly so that when it goes in the bike, it's perfect. And so you can fix that problem if your wheel isn't centering. And to do that, my favorite tool is a dishing tool, which is a wheel tool for checking centering. Make sure that the rim is centered over the axle. You can also check centering in a truing stand. Some truing stands, like park truing stands, the indicators are centered from the factory and a perfectly centered wheel will fall directly in the middle between these two indicators. So if you have a nice truing stand like this, you can use a truing stand, just put the wheel in there and the truing stand will tell you if it's centered. Now if you don't have a truing stand that has a self-centering feature, you can also use it another way to check centering. And to do that, you would just adjust one indicator, this is called an indicator, one side of the, or a pointer you could call it. And what you do to check if the wheel's centered is you adjust it. You pick a spot like the rim label, or you could go to the valve hole. The wheel has to be true in order to do this, true and round. And then you take the rim and you put it in and you adjust one side of the stand so that it's very close to the rim, maybe a millimeter away. And then, you take the wheel out of the stand and you flip it around. And you're going to check it right where you checked it before. Put the wheel back in. Now remember, my truing stance is set 
to self-center wheels or to tell you if the wheel's centered. So we're not gonna get an accurate reading because this wheel is actually not centered. But if it was centered, what will happen is when you flip it around, you'll have the same distance whether the wheel is in this way or flipped around the other way. That's how you know in a basic truing stand that doesn't self-center like Park's truing stands that the wheel is centered. But the easiest way to do it is with a dishing tool. And a dishing tool is a pretty simple tool. It's basically a, a gauge that has three feet on it. This is one foot, this is the other foot. So there's two feet that rest on the rim and there's a foot in the middle. Could call them pointers, but I like to think of them as feet. One, two, three. And you take these and you rest them on the wheel. Now these are adjustable. These ends move up and down to adjust to different rims, different size wheels. They also have another purpose, which I'll show you in a second. Those slide in and out, and this middle foot, this pointer, moves up and down. That lets you adjust it to the wheel. You want the two feet on the ends to rest on the rim, and then the pointer in the middle rests on the axle. And you set it so that all three feet touch. The middle touches the axle, and the feet touch the rim. Now it's set. As I was finishing this video, I realized I needed to explain one more thing because this can happen and it can be confusing. When you put the dishing gauge on, you make sure you push down on the foot here in the middle, the pointer, make sure it's touching the axle, and you have the ends resting on the rim, and then you flip the wheel over, and you put the dishing tool back on again, you might find that there's a gap between the pointer and the axle, which can be confusing because you want the pointer touching the axle on this side of the wheel and when you flip it over. So if this happens when you put the tool on, all you need to do is push that pointer down so it hits the axle on this side. And when you do that, when you flip the wheel over, Now the pointer in the middle touches the axle on this side and on the other side. And you get the reading that you need to work by, which is at the ends. It's this gap that you use to center the wheel because you move the rim with the spokes. The reason it gets confusing is people sometimes see this and they think, well, wait a minute, shouldn't I move the hub? <laughs> That's a hard way to think of it. It's much easier to, to move the rim. So now we'll go back to what we were doing in the video. We've taken a measurement on this side of the wheel. Now we're gonna compare this side of the wheel with the other side of the wheel. So flip the wheel over. I'm gonna put this on the other side of the wheel. And we discover that the wheel is way off center. See how when I put the tool on here now, the feet on the ends are nowhere near touching the rim. And what this tells you is this rim needs to move this way. Because it's not centered. And if we move it in this direction, a little bit will center it. We want to get it so that we get the same reading on this side and on this side. Now, this wheel has a through axle, so you measure on the surface of the through axle. For other wheels, like bolt-on wheels, on these wheels, you actually measure on the lock nut right here. You wouldn't measure on the axle because the axle could be different lengths. You never know if the axle is perfectly centered inside the hub, but you know that the 
lock nuts are what rest against the frame, and that's what you're trying to do is center the wheel in the frame. So you always check on the lock nuts on a bolt-on axle or a quick-release axle, quick-release hub or a bolt-on hub. So we know now that this wheel has to move in this direction, so we're going to put it back in the truing stand. And because this truing stand knows that the wheel needs to be in the middle, it shows me that there's a gap over here and it's very close over here. Gap over here, very close over here. So by moving the rim this way, I should be able to center the wheel. And to do it, I'm going to go half the distance, not the whole distance, because if I go the whole way over to here, I'll create a big, bigger gap over here. So I only have to go halfway when I find the distance I have to go with the dishing gauge, the centering gauge. It's different kinds of dishing gauges. This is Park Tools. Different types work different ways, but basically it's the same concept. Three points used as a reference compared to either side on the wheel. The ends on this dishing gauge also give you the ability to check dish on a wheel that has a tire on it. Sometimes the tire is so big it interferes, but this lifts the gauge up above so that you can check dish even when you have a tire on the rim. That's handy on a smaller wheel. Might have a big tire, but you can slide these in. You can't do that with all dishing gauges. For example, there's an old fashioned, old school dishing gauge. And see how it's long enough so that if I put it on here, it bumps into the tire. So I can't actually check the rim with this dishing, dishing gauge because the feet don't have those risers on them like the park dishing gauge. Because I checked with the dishing gauge, and because my truing stand shows me, I know that the rim is too far to the right, too far to the cassette side, and I need to move it to the other side, just a little bit, half the distance. So to do that, I'm going to work with just one side of the spokes. I'm going to work with the side on the left. Now, I could loosen all the spokes on the right side and that'll cause the rim to move to the left. I could tighten all the sides on, spokes on the left side to move the rim to the left. I could do a combination of both. The reason I'm going to tighten the spokes on the left side it's because by feeling the spokes, checking the tension in the wheel, I know that they're not super tight. So by tightening one side only, actually going to increase the tension on both sides, which will help the overall tension in the wheel. So I'm going to go around to the valve stem, start here. I'm going to work on the left side spokes only, and I'm going to try very hard to turn each spoke the same amount. That's the key to this thing. You want to turn each nipple, actually. If you choose to turn it a quarter turn, you want to do a quarter turn on each one. If you want a half turn, you do a half turn on each one. The more you turn it, the further the rim will move. I don't have to go very far, so I'm going to try a half turn on each nipple, and then I'm going to check it again. I'm going to go little by little so that I don't overshoot it and then have to come back again, which sometimes happens. If you're careful, you can sometimes get it right after just a couple of adjustments. So here we go. I put the spoke wrench on the nipple. I'm going to turn it a half a turn. I'm making sure that on the left side spoke, I'm not going to touch the right side spoke. So you have to pay attention. Half a turn, half a turn, half a turn. The more precise your turns, the better off you'll be. So I almost shot past it and went to the next one. There's 32 spokes in this wheel, so there should only be 16 spokes that I'm turning. So now that I've, I've tightened all those, the rim should move a little way. And 
sure enough, I now have more of a gap on the right side, so I've moved it part of the way. Now as you do this, the wheel could come out of true a little bit. If the wheel comes out of true a little bit, you can take a second and make a fine adjustment. So I have a little imperfection right there, which means that I turned one of these spokes on the left not quite as far as I needed to. So now by fixing it, I just added a little tension to the left side spoke and I pulled it over. So now at this point, you could take it out and reset your tool. Now before it was touching in all three points, whoops, and now there's a gap on this side. And there's still a gap on this side, a significant gap on this side, but it's getting a little less. So we can readjust this tool by just setting that pointer again. So we're going to go further. So just keep repeating this process until you get the wheel centered exactly how you want it. So my truing stand is saying that the wheel is pretty close. But a dishing gauge is always more accurate than the truing stand. It's just a finer tolerance. There's things on a truing stand like the caps on the ends of the pointers, the axle holders, and the truing stand has three points. They're fixed. I mean, the dishing gauge. So it's very, very accurate. And for that's why I like it for checking um, centering. It's the best tool. If the dishing gauge says it's spot on, it's spot on. <laughs> We're getting close. This side. And this side, it's very close now. So the truing stand was right. So if you're happy with it at that point, the dishing gauge says it's centered, the truing stand shows that it's centered. At that point, you can check it for trueness and roundness one more time. And if you have a true round and centered, you have a good wheel. And if you've centered a wheel that wasn't sitting centered in the frame, it'll now sit straight in the frame. And if a bike was pulling to one side or the other, it might solve the problem. It always makes it easier to adjust rim brakes if the wheel is centered in the frame. So that's a basic principles of centering and dishing wheels. And I recommend a dishing gauge if you have a park truing stand. It's a nice tool, saves you the step. But I still like a dishing gauge because with the dishing gauge, you can check different wheels. Um, it just gives you a more precise feel for it. They're not that expensive. I think if you build a lot of wheels and you fix a lot of wheels and you're working on our bikes, you'll like having one. I almost forgot to show you with a park dishing tool and a park truing stand, the design to work together. So you can check the centering of the rim without taking the wheel out of the truing stand, which saves a step and make it faster. So let me know if you have any questions about this. I can explain more in comments and I hope that helps you out. Assist or fix it. Fun thing to talk about and uh, actually are really fun thing to do fixing a wheel like this.